tell me more about the market for lithium. Where are you seeing the most demand? At the moment, China is driving the demand and is driving the production. So the Chinese uh, government, it's trying to cut reliance on fossil fuels, it's trying to cut pollution, and they have a lot more density. So they have a big incentive to do that. 50 million people living in, in Shanghai and Beijing, it's a lot of people. So they do have a real incentive to get on board with electric vehicles. The next place, if, if you can imagine, will be Europe, because European cities are also very congested. In the inner part of the city, um, they don't want to have any more diesel engines, they don't want to have as many petrol engines, so they want to have as many electric vehicles as possible. That is what is driving this. While the industry has been quite slow, the councils and the different regulating bodies have been more aggressive, and they are proposing legislation that, are, that is actually mandating by when we will have electric vehicles. So there's no way out. We are going to have electric vehicles. Is the lithium supply there to meet that deadline? No. I think the automotive industry has been slow to react. They're supporting the battery manufacturers, but the battery manufacturers are too busy growing themselves. They have to increase their capacities by five times, ten times. Now, the mining industry is not being supported by any of the two. There are very few deals coming from battery manufacturers or from car manufacturers supporting the mining industry. So the lithium has to come from somewhere. And I, I have to disagree with some of the, some of the reports that are believing that it, the market is going to be oversupplied. I don't think it will be oversupplied. Um, it is a lot more difficult to get a mining into production at the right quality, at the right scale, um, at the right production, um, than to get some of the other parts working. Tell me about the challenges of that production. For example, you explained about the difference between deposits in Australia versus South America. Does that present different challenges? It does, in a way. So rock projects, they produce a spodumen, which is a concentrate that they sell to China, and in China they reprocess it to produce hydroxide. And the hydroxide is what you actually use to produce a battery. From the brine projects, we produce lithium carbonate, and lithium carbonate also gets sold into China, the majority. A couple of other places uh, are starting to produce now uh, batteries out of lithium carbonate, but the majority gets produced out of China. And of both products, you have certain degrees of qualities. So you can have technical grade or you can have battery grade. So the more pure your product, the better pricing, the more you can sell it to different customers. If not your customer, you're selling a product that is not finished and your customer has to finish it. So it's slightly different the, the mechanics of how Australia is working with the rock projects and how much they are producing internally versus selling a raw material into China and what South America is doing with the brines that is selling a more finished product when they sell a lithium carbonate. So by the time you're into production, where do you see your product going? Will it be into China or will the EU have caught up? Difficult to say, that will be completed during the feasibility. Um, our expectation is that Europe will also ramp up production, but uh, at the moment it looks like 80% of the batteries will be produced out of China. Gabriel, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Paul. This is the second half of my conversation with Gabriel, so if you're starting here, click to watch the first half about Neolithium's Tres Cabladas project now. Learn more at neolithium.ca. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe for even more disruptive innovations from the neweconomy.com.